When the Transformers toy line launched in 1984, there were significantly more Autobot toys on the shelves than there were Decepticons. To address this imbalance and keep the Decepticons from being badly outnumbered, the creative team of the original Transformers animated series beefed up the forces of evil by adding a legion of generic, unnamed extra Decepticons to the early episodes of the show, made from the same identical body design shared by Thundercracker, Skywarp and Starscream in various different colours. These Decepticon Jets, or Seekers as they'd later come to be known, have become a staple of Transformers history, and I'll talk more about them in detail in a Basics episode of their own someday in the future. But today, I'm looking at just one of them in particular. You see, over the years, several individuals out of the nameless hordes seen in the original cartoon have retroactively been given names and identities all their own that have led to them becoming recurring characters in Transformers lore. These are the basics on one of the best known of those ascended extras. The Green One. Acid Storm The robot who would become known as Acid Storm appeared in the Generation 1 cartoon episode Divide and Conquer. He was one of three jets who, at Megatron's command, seeded the clouds over Cybertron with Acid Rain, which disabled a team of Autobots on an important mission to the planet. The Decepticon's success was short-lived. Thanks to a pep talk from human friend Chip Chase and the protection of Trailbreaker's force field, the Autobots recovered and the three Decepticons were seen off by Blue Streak. Their unique role and their blindingly bright solid colour paint jobs, one green, one blue and one yellow, made the trio stand out from the sea of generic seekers in the minds of fans, who followed Blue Streak's cue and referred to them as the Rainmakers. I'll take care of our three Rainmakers! It would be just shy of 25 years later, in 2008, before the Green Rainmaker suddenly shot to fame when a toy of him was unexpectedly released as part of the Transformers Universe line. And I'm not kidding when I say unexpected, they released him at mass retail before Thundercracker. He was given a toned down colour scheme with an acid burn camouflage pattern and christened Acid Storm. Acid Storm disabled circuit tree. For such an obscure character to get a toy was quite a rarity at the time, and it came about thanks to the work of Transformers fan and archivist Matthew Karpowicz. Back in the days before the Transformers wiki existed, Karpowicz regularly provided Hasbro representatives with reference material on aspects of the Transformers franchise that were, at the time, much less widely known about, and it was from Karpowicz's obscure omnibus that Hasbro pulled the character. In addition to giving him a name and making the term Rainmaker official, Hasbro ascribed Acid Storm a personality as an intelligent and dedicated Decepticon who preferred to dwell in obscurity despite his skills. As a nod to Karpowicz, Acid Storm was described as a talented data gatherer. Even his weapons, the Acid Rain generating Hyperion 3 cannons, took their name from Karpowicz's email address at the time. In the 2010s, Acid Storm has steadily become a recurring character in Transformers toy lines, with more and more Seeker toys and merchandise being recoloured into his vibrant green hues, even including a prestigious high-end collector-targeted masterpiece figure. Though he's never come to the fore in any media, he has popped up in the occasional mobile game and he's often seen in background roles in works from various publishers. The Transformers Collectors Club granted names to his fellow Rainmakers, dubbing the blue one Ion Storm and the yellow Nova Storm. And in particular, IDW Publishing regularly featured him in their comic books as one of the Decepticons who rejected peace after the end of the war and continued to fight to conquer Earth and Cybertron. In perhaps his most notable role, he was cast to play Starscream in a movie about the Seeker leader's life, but eventually quit because he was tired of being painted grey for the part, worried that it would be harmful to his identity as the Green One. 2018 was a big year for Acid Storm. The appearance of a Green Seeker in the live-action Bumblebee movie implies he snuck his way onto the silver screen, 
And accompanying the release of a new figure in the Transformers Cyberverse toy line, the character also returned to TV screens for the first time since the original cartoon in the Cyberverse animated series. As part of the team of Seekers stationed on Earth, hunting down Bumblebee and Windblade. Now, Acid Storm's profile on the official Cyberverse website refers to the character with male pronouns, but in the cartoon itself, Acid Storm has a feminine voice provided by actress Jamie Lamchick. Are you sure? A mind rip is an extremely dangerous process. It could burn out her mental circuitry. This isn't unique either. Once and former fellow Rain maker Nova Storm also appears in the show with their gender changed to female. However, the Cyberverse cartoon has different designs for male and female seekers. And in an apparent case of animation inconsistency, Acid Storm has appeared with both designs in different episodes, leaving it unclear what gender they're intended to be. When asked about this, Cyberverse writer May Cat said that changing their gender appearance in this way is just something Acid Storm likes to do. If the cartoon plans to lean into that and keep it up in the show's second season, or if Acid Storm will take on a more consistent appearance, and if they'll get more time in the spotlight either way, we'll just have to wait and see. And those are the basics on Acid Storm, a bot who's come an impressively long way from being a generic repaint. Share your thoughts on them in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and come back next time for the third of our weekly episodes about cult favorite characters.